Hi everyone, so my name is Patrick and I'm a master's candidate in the Department of Geography. Today I'm going to talk to you about urban parks and well-being. I know a few of you, I've seen you um, for my blue box talk, so this is going to be a little bit repetitive, but it's still going to be just as fun as before. <laughs> uh, so Point Pleasant Park, which is my case study, is a meaningful place um, of nature for park visitors and local style packs where they have established, established strong place attachments. So it's a very important place to people. It was hit by Hurricane Juan in 2003 and has been undergoing restoration since 2005. And my main goal of my research is examining how visitors' place attachments and their well-being have been restored in the past 12 years since Hurricane Juan hit Point Pleasant Park. So Point Pleasant Park is on the Halifax Peninsula, as those uh, of you from Halifax know, and it's visited by about 2 million people a year, so a lot of people visiting using the park. And when Hurricane Juan came through, it destroyed about 75% of the tree uh, forest cover, or 70,000 trees, so a lot of damage was done to the park. This is my favorite picture that really kind of explains that, the damage. Uh, at the top, you can see that you know, it's very nice, lush, green forested area, and if you didn't know the Prince of Wales Tower was even there, you wouldn't have thought it was the same place. So a lot of damage was done to the park. So my approach to assess place attachments and well-being is I'm using a place-based approach, which looks at understanding the meanings behind uh, people's experiences and their choices. Place attachment itself is a positive bond that develops between a group of people or a person with their environment. And we assess place attachment based off people's memories, perceptions, uh, their thoughts and their intentions, and depending on how uh, strong their place attachment is, is shown through their usage of a place or if they feel a sense of community. And in general, they just have really positive opinions about the place. So it was a qualitative study, and I'll just go through this quickly. I conducted interviews, surveys, and did some archival uh, research to kind of get uh, people's opinions and emotions um, from newspapers in initially after the event. I had 90 participants in total, and I was comparing uh, long-term uses of the park compared to short-term uses of the park to get that difference between the drastic change and people who never saw the damage. So to go quickly over some preliminary themes that have developed so far since I'm still in the analysis stage is that we do see a sense of community and we see that particularly with the dog walker community where people go and walk the dogs together in groups. Uh, there's a cultural appreciation for the monuments and the history of the Halifax that's shown in the park. And there's a connection, really positive connection to nature where people enjoy the trees, uh, just the beauty that nature provides. In terms of place attachment restoration, uh, there's still the sense of it's still not the same, that the pre-Hurricane uh, Juan Park was more beautiful, it was more dense, but that there are things are coming along and people do see that the green's returning and that it's you know, becoming used like it was once before. And in terms of mental well-being, uh, all participants seem to be receiving very positive uh, benefits through stress relief, feeling comfortable, feeling relaxed, and feeling happy. So some uh, quick preliminary conclusions is uh, kind of as I just mentioned, all participants, both long-term and short-term users, seem to have positive uh, place attachments and are receiving mental benefits. Um, those long-term users, particularly those who were greatly affected uh, by Hurricane Juan, seem to have uh, a restored place attachment with the park. And even though many are still reminiscing of a fuller, greener park, and this might affect mental well-being, something that I'll uh, delve into further. And long-term users' place attachments are particularly positive, uh, which is interesting given their, uh, a lot of their initial you know, grief after Hurricane Juan. And this might be because of the type of place uh, Point Pleasant Park is. And if it's a place where people can meet their needs and you know, what they go there to walk their dog or to go for a dog, if they still meet their needs there, then they will probably develop similar relationships that they uh, had before with the park. But again, that's something I'll plan to look into further. And of course, uh, some good news out of this is that it was really good to see a very passionate community effort to restore the park after uh, Hurricane Juan hit. So it's nice to see that community engagement when the environment is damaged, and particularly with restoring uh, the park, 
Uh, they decided to go with the kind of uh, local Acadian ecology of the area instead of going with something more grandiose like a huge fountain or something not not as local. So it was nice to see them going for from a very ecological standpoint. And another good thing is that uh, over time people seem to be uh, receiving benefits and restoring those positive attachments with places after they've been destroyed. Thank you.